In this video, we're going to find the Taylor series for the exponential function f of x equals e to the x, and we want to identify its radius convergence. Uh, and we're going to do this for two different values of a, right? So the a is the center of the Taylor series. Now, we're going to start off by looking at the Taylor series centered at zero. This is what's referred to as the Maclaurin series for e to the x, and this is actually a pretty important one that we're going to want to remember. Now, as we saw previously, when we have a when we have our Taylor series, we see that the coefficients of the Taylor series start from zero and go towards infinity. The coefficients of the Taylor series is going to be the nth derivative of the function evaluated at the center a, and then divide that by n factorial, and then you'll times that by x minus a to the n. And so this gives us this gives us Taylor's formula for a Taylor series. Now let's apply this to e to the x. Now, e to the x is a really great function in, in that we can predict what its higher derivatives are going to be. Because notice that for e to the x, it's, you know, if f of x equals e to the x, then the first derivative of e to the x is also equal to e to the x. And in fact, all derivatives of e to the x will likewise be e to the x. And so if we evaluate these things, if we evaluate these derivatives, at the center zero, we're going to end up with e to the zero, which is always equal to one. And that's all there is to it. Therefore, the Taylor series for, I should say the Maclaurin series for e to the x will look like n equals zero to infinity. We're going to get one over n factorial times x minus zero to the n. Or in simpler form, uh, we get n equals zero to infinity. We're going to get x to the n over n factorial. So this is a power series where the denominator is just the n factorial. So in expanded form, this will look like 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 6 plus x to the fourth over 24. Continue on in the pattern we've established there. So this gives us the... This gives us the Taylor series, or I should say the Maclaurin series, right? I mean, every Maclaurin series is a Taylor series, uh, but it just Maclaurin series just means we've centered at zero, like we mentioned before. So we consider this thing at zero. We have the Maclaurin series, but what is the radius of convergence? When will this thing be convergent? So to determine the convergence here, we're going to use the ratio test. Uh, so the ratio test, we need to consider the ratio of consecutive terms a n plus 1 over a n. And so we do this, uh, well, taking the terms here, we're going to get x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. That's the a n plus 1 term. Then take the reciprocal of a n, we're going to get n factorial over x to the n. And now we've seen things like this many times. The x to the n will cancel with all but one of the x's. So we are going to get an absolute value of x. And n factorial will cancel with all but the n plus 1 factor. We're using the fact that n plus 1 factorial is factors as n plus 1 times n factorial. So it's that n factorial that's canceling out there. And so we end up with, oh, I gave myself way more space than I needed. Uh, so we're going to have the absolute value of x over n plus 1. And so taking the limit here as n goes to infinity, we end up with just the absolute value of x over infinity. And it does not matter what real number you place in for x, uh, there is no way that a real number divided by infinity could be anything other than zero. So this thing is going to squish towards zero, and that's the limit of the ratios. And so by the, by the ratio test, since this limit uh, is less than one, this tells us that this series is absolutely convergent for all real numbers. And so we end up seeing that the radius of convergence is infinity. And this, this, this series is convergent from negative infinity to infinity. It's absolutely convergent. Now, what we are not saying at this moment is that e to the x is equal to this power series. But if this, because all we know from Taylor's formula is that if, if a function has a power series representation, then that power series representation will be given by Taylor's formula. We haven't yet said that the function is equal to its power series representation, but for e to the x, we're in a pretty good position, right? We have a power series, we have a Taylor series, and it's convergent for all real numbers. That's pretty cool. Uh, now let's let's try to look at it this again, but this time let's set the center to equal to two, right? So we'll have the Taylor series centered at two. 
Um, if we do that, well, be aware that the derivatives of e to the x are still the same thing, right? That the nth derivative of e to the x is still e to the x. And so as we look at the nth derivative evaluated at 2, the center, we end up with e squared. And so in this situation, the Taylor series would be the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. You're going to get e squared over n factorial times x minus 2 to the n. And so in an expanded form, this thing would look like when you plug in 0, you're going to end up with an e squared. Uh, then the next term, you're going to get an e squared times x minus 2. Uh, you're going to get an e squared over 2 times x minus 2 squared. Whoops. Uh, you get an e squared over 6 times x minus 2 cubed. And this would continue on and on and on. This is the Taylor series centered at 2. Now, I want you to just be aware that if you go through the calculation, uh, as you go through the calculation of the Taylor series, for this situation, uh, using the ratio test, a n plus 1 over a n, basically everything's going to look the same. This time, this will simplify as x minus 2 over n plus 1 factorial. That's the only distinction here. This thing will still approach 0, which is less than 1. And so we again see that the radius of convergence is equal to infinity. So this, this uh, Taylor series would likewise have its would have this infinite radius of convergence, just like just like when we did the Maclaurin series. And this gives us uh, the Maclaurin series for e to the x, and you can see that there was nothing particularly special about two. You could use a different number and easily find the Taylor series for e to the x. And what made e to the x so, so nice in this situation is that its higher derivatives were predictable. In fact, e to the x is a function whose higher derivatives are always equal to the original function. And therefore, it has a pretty tame uh, Taylor series associated to it.